Good morning, Calvary Chapel young people. Well, we're still in Texas, and I hope you're enjoying this Memorial Day weekend. It's Labor Day. Labor Day weekend. I get confused. <laughs> but anyway, we hope you're enjoying the holiday, and we are excited about bringing you today's lesson. We're going to be studying a, uh, the person called Daniel. And I'm sure you're very familiar with the story of Daniel and the lion's den. But there's a lot more to Daniel than that one story. And we're going to see how the Lord uses Daniel and how Daniel, following the Lord, shows the people some major things about being uh Follow about following the Lord and trusting in what the Lord has for each individual's life. So Daniel's story is very, very important in terms of the development of the nation of Israel and of the Jewish people. His story is a book, of, a story of faith and courage. He is considered to be one of the major prophets. Actually, his book in the Bible is the 27th book in the Old Testament, and it is the last book in that section that is referred to as the Major Prophets. And we can learn a lot about Daniel. We can learn a lot from Daniel, but today we're just going to get to know him a little bit, and we're going to learn three important things about him. We're going to learn about bold faith, the power of conviction, and witnessing well. And Julia's going to kind of give you a little rundown on each of those statements. So, bold faith means? That Daniel knew what was right. He stood up for his beliefs, and God blessed him for that. And they blessed his friends for their bold statement of faith. They didn't waffle. They didn't, when, they were, when their faith was tested, they didn't say, hmm, maybe not today. They said now, today, and they were bold about it. What is the power of conviction? Well, he, it, the power of conviction refers to the impact that he has and um, the, the, the decisions and how important his, his conviction means how much does he really believe it? How convicted is he of his belief? And the power of his conviction, Daniel showed his firm belief. He followed God's law. He stood up in the face of a king who could have had him killed for, disobey, for be, disobedience. Yeah. He could have been killed, and he knew that. But he stood on his faith. He was convicted, and he, he didn't waver. and Because he knew it was far, far more important to be obedient to God, even if that meant he would lose his earthly life. And that's pretty powerful conviction. Yep, yeah, that's very strong conviction. Mm -hmm. And then we talk about witnessing well. Well, he, he continues to be bold. And he's bold while he's following God, in, while he's in captivity. And he has pressure, and he could be harmed. And there, there were pressure from the king. There was probably some peer pressure involved. Um, but he allowed God to show his power to the people who did not believe in him. And he was able to show, he was able to assist God, not that God needs assistance showing his power, but Daniel was able to be part of that um, through his actions and that through the way he obeyed God. Well, it's going to be an exciting lesson. I think we'll all get a lot out of today's lesson. I think so too. Mr. Rudy, before we start, would you lead us in prayer? I most certainly will. Thank you. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to come together as Christian people, to worship you, to stand firmly um, in your shadow, in your guidance, and say, yes, Lord, we love you, yes. and yes, Lord, we will follow you. Yes. So help us understand the lesson. Help us to be strong in our conviction and be a bold witness for you, Lord. So we just ask for your guidance, direction, give Julia and I the wisdom to speak well 
and that you would receive God's word uh, through today's lesson. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So our story today and our introduction to Daniel all takes place in the first chapter of Daniel. And I'm going to start reading. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and surrounded it with his army. This happened during the third year that Jehoiakim, say it for me. Okay. Now you got me confused. Jehoiakim was Jehoiakim, king of Judah. That's right. It happens sometimes. The Lord allowed Nebuchadnezzar to capture Jehoiakim, king of Judah. Nebuchadnezzar also took some of the things from the temple of God, and he carried them to Babylonia and put them in the temple of his God. Then King Nebuchadnezzar gave an order to Astanaz, his chief officer. He told Astanaz to bring some of the men from Judah into his house. He wanted them to be from important families. Mm -hmm. He wanted <clears throat> those who were from the family of the king of Judah. King Nebuchadnezzar wanted only healthy young Israelite men. These men were not to have anything wrong with their bodies. They were to be handsome, well-educated, and they would be able to learn and understand things. He wanted these who were able to learn to serve in his palace. Aspenaz was to teach them the language and writings of the Babylonians. Among those young men were some people were some from the people of Judah. These were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Then Aspenaz, the chief officer, gave them Babylonian, gave them Babylonian names. Daniel's new name was Belshazzar. Belteshazzar. Hananiah's was Shadrach. Mishael's was Meshach, and Azariah's was Abednego. Daniel decided not to eat the king's food and wine because that would make him unclean, ceremonially unclean. So he asked Aspenai for permission not to make himself unclean in this way. God made Aspenaz uh, want to be kind and merciful to God. So God kind of touched Aspenai's heart to lean towards Daniel. And Aspenaz ordered a guard to watch Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Daniel said to the guard, Please give us this test for ten days. Don't give us anything but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then after ten days, compare us with the other young men who eat the king's food and see for yourself who looks healthier. Then you judge for yourself how you want to treat us, your servants. So the guard agreed to test them for 10 days. After 10 days, they looked very healthy. They looked better than all of the other young men who ate the king's food. So the guard took away the king's special food and wine. He gave Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Ezra vegetables instead. So all the young men that had been with Daniel and the others all of a sudden went from eating fancy foods to eating basic vegetables and drinking water. So the king talked to them. He found that none of the young men were as good as Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So those four young men became the king's servants. Every time the king asked them about something important, they showed much wisdom and understanding. And he found they were ten times better than all the fortune tellers and magicians in his kingdom. So, that's the end of our reading. That's the, yes, the end of the Bible story. But, we've got some important questions we'd like to ask each other. And uh, you can help us with the answers, even though you can't communicate. You can think about them sure. as we ask the questions, because they're 
they really underscore what we talked about at the beginning of the lesson of the three major things we would want to take away from today's lesson, which were... Bold faith. Bold faith. The power of convictions. Power of conviction. And the importance of witnessing well. Absolutely. So the first question is, sacred objects taken from the temple in Jerusalem were taken where? Well, you remember they were taken from the temple in Jerusalem to the house of King Nebuchadnezzar. To the house of King Nebuchadnezzar's false god. Not to his house, but to the temple that he had built for his false god. And something we need to remember in uh, this first question is God allowed the objects to be taken. He did. He could have very easily stopped it, but he had his reason, so he allowed certain objects to be taken. We don't know what those objects were, but we can assume they were of gold and they were uh, very valuable. Probably. Young men chosen to serve in King Nebuchadnezzar's court needed to have what kind of characteristics? And that means what kind of person are they? Well, they, he was looking for the best of the best. He was looking for the men who, young men who were coming from the best families. So that means the children were raised well and they were healthy. And they needed to be good looking, which seems kind of silly, but it was important to them. And they needed to be good looking, they need to be healthy, they could not have any physical impairments. They couldn't have trouble walking or hearing. He didn't want any of those coming to the palace. And they needed to be not only well-educated and strong, but they also had to be able to learn new things. So he was going, the king was interested in having people in his palace as his, as his servants that would be strong and productive and able to do both hard work and an important mind work, right? Yeah. Like like solving problems and understanding math and designing buildings and building buildings. Mm -hmm. He he was he wanted he wanted people. He wanted the men who would be able to do all of those things. He wanted the full package. He was looking for young men that could become leaders. Is what he was. But he wanted them to lead under his rule, not God's rule. Now, Daniel was from what tribe? He was from the tribe of Judah. And most of the young men they took at, in, into captivity were from the tribe of Judah. We uh -huh. don't know if they all were, but the majority of them were. And in our reading, we learned that their, their names were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. But we also learned that they were renamed when we when they got there. And you will often hear that these young men were referred to as Bel Belteshazzar, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah. So if you hear... Abednego. <laughs> all of these names are a little hard to, to say for Anglos like me and people who don't have experience with Middle Eastern names. But we work hard to remember them because it's in remembering them that we that it's helpful for us to fully remember the stories. And so we work at it, and even though I stumble a bit, I practice, and then I get better, and then sometimes I need some more practice. So I, I apologize for the stumbling. But if you should hear those names, those are the four names of these same young men. In fact, as we're going to do several weeks uh, studying the book of Daniel, mm -hmm. And as we refer to them later on in our lessons, we will be using the Babylonian names. Yes, yes. So don't that part should don't let that part confuse you. Why didn't Daniel want to eat the food from the king? After all, you know, he has given him the best meats, mm -hmm. the best cakes, mm -hmm. the best wine. So you, Daniel and his friends came from Judah and the, the Jewish people had traditions and they were very important traditions about how they'd eat 
And the food that was prepared in the king's kitchen was not in accordance to those traditions. We talk about, in the Old Testament, we talk about, I'm sorry, in the New Testament, we talk about the apostles wrestling with the idea of eating unclean food. And, and that's, that's, this is what Daniel is protecting. His tradition and his belief was that they were to observe the dietary practices. They weren't supposed to eat meat and dairy together. They weren't supposed to eat animals that were not clean, and they considered pork to be unclean. And they did the, the practices of what you do with the animal as you prepare it for, um, for us to eat, for a meal, um, those practices are still in place by people who call themselves Jewish people today. The, we call them kosher practices. And just as today, pe Jews who are observant in their kosher practices are very serious about it, so was Daniel and his friends. And so he, he wanted to make sure that they were not in a, in a place of violating the dietary laws. Yeah. In it that, was, it was more than a tradition. This was a yeah. command given to the Jewish people by God in their dietary laws. I had a uh, close friend of mine uh, for a number of years that lived across the street from us when I was very young. And they were Jewish, and they were kosher people. They were. Uh, uh, they had two kitchens in their house. Mm -hmm. Dairy and poultry were prepared in one set of sinks and stoves and ovens, and meat and other products were prepared in a different set of cooking utensils, stoves, ovens, dishes were washed in separate sinks. Uh, we may think it sounds strange, but back in the day when God gave the these laws, they were very uh, deep health concerns, and that's the reason God gave the law. <laughs> and these were then, and are now, among Jewish people, acts of faith. Absolutely. They, they believe that this is pleasing to God, and this is how they express their faith, and it's important that we're respectful of that. But he wasn't trying to be a vegetarian. No. He was trying to remain kosher, and um, but what did he ask? He to asked. Be fed? He asked to be fed just vegetables and water, because those, if that's what they kept their diet to, that would keep them within the the boundaries of of the eating of, of kosher practices. Now he he may also, I don't know if he knew or not that that would have been very very healthy for them, and that. The, um, his captors would see how healthy they were at the end. I don't know if he knew that or not. Don't know. The Bible doesn't say, it so doesn't I, say. I can't say that they did. How many days did Daniel and his friends uh, only have vegetables to eat? Ten. Ten days. Yeah, he asked for, give us ten days. Ten days. Mm -hmm. We're going to find out there's something significant about the number of ten. We might not know what it means, but in today's lesson, it's repeated three different times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And God does not repeat things uh, unless there's an important reason for it. So it's not an accident that in the Bible, when we go through the reading, we read three times. We read um, Daniel asks to be given vegetable and water only instead of the meals containing meat that was for 10 days yeah and then the the king found daniel and his friends were how much more capable than the magicians and enchanters of his court he found them to be 10 times um more capable so that's twice that's twice and they also found that in, not in the translation of the Bible that we read, but if you read it out of the King James, it also describes that they were observed to be ten times healthier than the other captives. And more capable. Ten times more ten, healthier right. and more capable. Ten days, ten times healthier, and ten times more capable. <clears throat> 
so as I said, we don't know the significance of 10, but we do know it's in there for a reason, and uh, we're going to research it, and maybe we can come up with some answers. I'll certainly talk with Pastor Brian and see what his thoughts are on the number 10 being used three times in the book of Daniel. They were faithful people. They believed in God. And the decisions that they were making were decisions made based on their faith. And God blessed them. And whether and how God decides which blessings, how many blessings, how big the blessings, we know that when we trust in God, He blesses us. And he, sometimes He doesn't bless us with the PlayStation that we want, but sometimes he does, and sometimes when there's a really scary thing like a wildfire, he protects us. And sometimes the property isn't protected, and sometimes those kinds of events turn out in a way that we don't want them to. And yet we still trust in God, and we trust him, and he blesses us. And for those of us who have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we know that we are abundantly blessed with the reward of a heavenly forever after. So in conclusion of today's lesson, you know, Daniel and his friends spent another two years in training before they went to court to, uh, to work. In, in essence, you could call it something else, but they, they were enslaved, but they were working in the palace. And as we study Daniel more and more, we'll see how God uses Daniel and his friends in a mighty way. And this will be, it's got some surprises coming up. So big time, big time I think surprises. you will enjoy uh, the study of Daniel. But uh, that's our, our close for today. Uh, we just thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this. And we'll work on pronouncing these names. <laughs> we'll practice. Uh, it, it takes a lot of practice. <laughs> we love you. We miss you. We so pray for you and your families. We're looking forward to seeing you. But until that time, please keep us in your prayers and uh, keep following the Lord. Will you lead us in closing prayer? I will. I will. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the rich lessons you, get, lessons you give us in the Bible. We learn so much from the prophets. We learn so much from just the regular men and women, boys and girls that are all throughout the Bible stories, Lord. Help us to stay in your word. Help us to every day, every day, be in the word, read one of your Bible stories, open the Bible and read it, crawl up on our mom's lap and have her read it to us. Lord, help us, please, to make the Bible and your word and your teaching a part of our lives every day, every hour, every minute. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your protections. We ask for comfort for those who are suffering, for those who have loss, for those who are lonesome. We just ask you to bless their hearts, touch their hearts, and we lift them up to you, Lord, with great thanks. And we do all this in Jesus' name. And then we say... Amen. Amen. Bye. Bye-bye.